Good morning, YouTube. Stayed at a Walmart last night. Uh, very peaceful. We're gonna head to a dump station real quick, uh, dump and fill up, and then run the dogs for a little bit, and then we're also going to head out and, and do some laundry. It's not a very eventful day by any means, but hey, it's a day in the life, so let's see what we can get into. <laughs> it's a beautiful morning here, and last night we did have a uh, live stream and in case you weren't there I did get a, an update from Holiday Rambler and as a matter of fact our unit has been completed our uh, vacation at 36F it's done it's on its way uh, should be expected to be in Tucson by Monday or Tuesday it sounds like so that's great news to me I gotta say I've had such a great consistent experience with Holiday Rambler uh, customer support and that's not something that you can say for many companies um, Jayco for example left a, a bit to be desired you know that they're a, 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 they're a pretty big company out there new camp for example amazing customer service fantastic customer service and Holiday Rambler you know for being a, a part of a much larger group uh, for being part of Fleetwood and American Coach and you know all that I think they've done just a fantastic job and Cindy uh, in particular is just incredible so I gotta figure out a way to, to give her her boss feedback and, and let her know that like it, it was it's a bit a really good experience just uh, being treated like a human being you know uh, not being treated like just another number or people are frustrated you know especially when you know if, if I were to have a warranty issue like I would be frustrated of course and then like having somebody frustrated at my frustration doesn't help, right? But uh, it's such a different experience being treated like a, a human being. And after having some negative experiences, it's kind of humbling, right? It's kind of like, I, I get a little choked up because I'm like, God, that is so nice uh, to be treated like a human being. And she definitely does, she definitely does. She, she had also expressed excitement for us. Uh, you know, and it felt pretty genuine, which is really awesome. That's just, it's just such an awesome thing, so. Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how our experience at La Mesa Tucson is, and um, and hopefully I have good news to report there. Fingers crossed. I had a great experience at uh, La Mesa La Mesa location, so I have high hopes. There's a tanker here, but I don't think he's gonna be in the way from what I can see, so we should still be good. <laughs> I hate these parking lots. <laughs> uh, all right, I guess we can still zigzag. Can I, I can't make that turn. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, we got an U-turn, I guess. Boy, that's a funky one, isn't it? Turn radius is terrible. Oh man. All right, they do have propane here, it looks like, to fill up. Um, okay, so he's over here. What's air? There's a dump station, I believe. So I think we're still safe. All righty. The scary part first. Ah, this gets a lot of you. So funny. I 
I've seen people not use gloves, and I've mentioned this, I think, three times now. Here's the fourth. Use gloves. Use gloves. Don't ever not use gloves. <laughs> use gloves. There's actually a nice pack of uh, uh, nitrog gloves here. Which are, these are a little bit thicker than what we, we have. I might have to pick some of these up. I like them in black for some reason. Kind of cool. They're a little bit thicker. Uh, so hopefully, you know, if you're working on your car or something like that, these would be, be kind of nice to have. Nice for somebody to leave them there. I don't know if that was intentional or not. I've been using the little pods for uh, for the bathroom. Haven't smelled a single thing, which is pretty reassuring actually. Kind of a nice thing. Uh, it's weird, but it, it's the little pods seem to work better than the the liquids. I don't know if that's a that's a real thing, but this time I'm gonna put a pod in the uh, the sink instead. Uh, so we got. I'm gonna go ahead and fill a bowl. They're the uh, RV digested, and there's a couple good ones uh, apparently. Uh, or you can use the geo method, which I like the idea of, but we already have these. And these are a little more convenient, I gotta say. It's literally pull one out of the bag, drop it in there, let it dissolve. So that's hard to argue with, I'd say. By unique marine and camping. We get a good amount of water in the tank. And I, I do think that part of the issue is just not having enough water in there. So that definitely helps. Uh, use enough water, I'm sure we'll solve a lot of the, the smell, but yeah, this definitely seems to be making a good a good difference, especially when it heats up to like 65, 70 degrees during the day. Okie dokie. Let me run some water in there. Dogs, the dogs pretty quickly, so. There we go. My sink's kind of grody. I gotta clean that up. Alright. So if you're wondering what the overflow lines are. It's those guys, water just pouring out. Kind of ridiculous. That's what this is actually attached to. It's one of the uh, the overflow lines. Uh, it was a lot faster to fill. All right, and uh, let's head out of here before we lose all of our water. <laughs> yeah, now that leaking out um, will not only happen if you're at an angle while filling up, of course, but if you go at an angle or you start sloshing around while driving, it's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> if there's like, uh, and once it gets going, apparently, like, until it can get some air in the tank another way, like, it's gonna keep going, which is just, it's nuts. It's nuts. So, let's, uh, let's see. I think there's a park out here. There's a soccer field on one side of the parking lot, and then the other side might be some good spot for, for these guys to run, and we'll let them, we'll let them play. I think it's gonna be right out here. Hmm. This is Arizona State Trust Land, and I know with some state trust land, you can get a permit and you can camp. Um, I don't know about this. This is interesting because there's kind of a, there's like a whole road <laughs> and then it kind of ends because, you know, I don't, I don't see any camp pits or anything like that. Look at these beautiful cacti. I think those are saguaro cactus. Um, yeah, it looks like maybe you can Maybe you can camp. There's idiots that dump out here. That's nice. Um, interesting. But either way, I can throw the ball for the dogs and get them some exercise. Oh, look at that cactus right there. <laughs> look at all those arms. Oh, oh yeah. Ready. Bring ball. Closer. Drop off. Drop off. Come on. Ready, buddy. 
right here. That's once, both once, once. Stay, halt. Once. Halt. Break. Great dogs, I'll tell you. Great dogs. Oh, what a beautiful cactus. Oh. Let's go see one of these guys over here. There's a lot of folks that seem to come out here to break like porcelain and and glass, which in Washington, if you see that, usually there's like, they set it up as like a, a shooting range because we have a lot of Department of Natural Resources uh, land that anybody can go out and camp on or, or shoot on. I don't know what the rules are here, which is, you know, obviously, I don't want to come out here and shoot if we're not allowed to, but, but I don't see, uh, I don't see shells or, or any casings at all. So that's kind of, it's uh, kind of interesting. I don't know if that's what this land is used for, but. <laughs> These guys are having fun. Oh, yeah. I can see this land being a beautiful place to come out and enjoy your, your motocross bike or dirt, you know, whatever. Wow. This must be an old cactus. Isn't that interesting? Beautiful. In British Columbia, they had done at one of the universities a, a research study uh, about plants and trees and, and root systems. So they took like the hormone levels and, and the, um, the chemical compositions and they took them of, of a healthy, you know, mimicked forest. And then they took a sample of a, a forest when one tree was being uh, like it had a broken lamb or, or it detected that it was in danger. And the interesting thing is the, the chemical composition, there was actual hormonal changes in these trees, which is fascinating. But even more fascinating, right, is not only that these trees, they're alive, right, they're alive, of course, they, they know when something's wrong, they know if they've gotten sick, they would actually communicate with the other trees and the other trees would change in composition, which I find so fascinating. I, I've never seen, up until that point, I thought every tree was kind of an individual, uh, but they're actually very reliant on, on one another. And apparently they can send nutrients to other trees, which is such an interesting, interesting thing, uh, other plants. And uh, sometimes, you know, with things like moss and whatever, they actually, they all kind of work together in an ecosystem to, uh, to protect one another. I think that's so interesting. But I wonder about cacti, you know? Because uh, I kind of I, I half jokingly say, you know, his friends, right? But I wonder if the cacti have a, a good root system and if they communicate with one another as well and, and how, they, uh, how they protect each other. That's, isn't that kind of interesting? And, but also they, they have, they have built-in barbs, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and needles. They're basically a built-in barbed wire, right? So uh, <laughs> like, uh, that's obviously like a protection mechanism. But uh, to what end, you know, like it, what exactly are they protecting themselves from? I would imagine uh, they'd protect themselves from birds or, or um, you know, certain other creatures, you know, from getting in there and burrowing like you, they might in an oak tree or something like that. But maybe somebody else knows. I don't, I don't know enough about cacti, but I think they are very, they're a very fascinating plant, a very fascinating species. But isn't that cool? One other kind of interesting thing I'm seeing is uh, there's a lot of these holes in the ground you can see uh, all over, right? I would imagine that the wildlife out here would need the plants for shade and maybe some water, right? And they soak up the water, they release it into the ground. The, the, uh, the animals out here can, uh, can get a hold of that. I imagine there are snakes and whatnot out here as well, but all sorts of other you know, chinchillas and whatever, right? But, I, I would be willing to bet that they all kind of work together and the, the waste from one creature, it creates nitrogen in the soil, as, as sparse as this is, right? Uh, but creates nitrogen and things like that, that all of the plants can soak up and it, it's all kind of a whole cycle of, 
of uh, an ecosystem out here. I don't know enough about it, but I do think it's quite fascinating, right? Because, you know, obviously as humans, we have so many different systems here. We have so many different systems ourselves, but I think we kind of uh, take for granted some of the natural systems. This is something you guys might find kind of funny is uh, I haven't actually done laundry in like two and a half years, three years, something like that. Emma and I kind of divvy up our, our responsibilities. So she doesn't mind doing laundry and she likes clothes more than I do. Like, for example, I keep my uh, my clothing to a get yeah, more of a minimum, right? I've had two pairs of jeans, three pairs of shorts, I think, four pairs of shorts. Um, underwear, socks, and a bunch of t-shirts, and I, I, I've been slowly getting rid of my t-shirts as I get holes in them, and they're shrinking and whatnot, but um, yeah, I haven't done laundry in a long time. I prefer to do mopping, sweeping, uh, you know, the outside care, and the dump station. Emma would rather not do the dump station and would prefer to do laundry, and I think we both prefer for her to do dishes. I just, there's something about it I really hate it, but that scrub daddy, I gotta tell you guys, that scrub daddy's where it's at. I'll wash the heck out of a pan with the scrub daddy. It makes it fun. I don't know. Um, anywho, so yeah, I haven't done uh, I haven't done laundry in a little while, and I figure uh, <laughs> bring you guys along to see if I break anything. I probably won't, but I'm not 100% sure, and that's what it's important. Uh, and I don't think we have coins, but if I need to uh, make a little change, I'm sure there's somewhere around here that, that we can do that. But there, I think this one's called Papa Papa Laundromat or Papa Laundry. Kind of funny. Boy, do I have a hankering for pizza right now? It's crazy. <laughs> Big old hankering for pizza. It's a, it's terrible. I don't know that I'll be going back to Peter Piper's Pineapple Pizza Paradise, but <laughs> what is your guys' uh, <laughs> favorite pizza joint? I actually. Uh, I know a lot of people are like everybody's everywhere. Jets Pizza, for example, for some folks. Domino's I think is the worst hands down the worst pizza hut is pretty good it's pretty good it's it's better if you go in there's a there's a spot in Smoky Point Washington where I would get like boneless wings barbecue wings and uh, and their pizza with the stuffed crust oh so good Papa John's is my favorite chain but my favorite spot hands down is going to be Slim and Huskies in Nashville and Antioch Tennessee Woo, so good. The best pizza, I swear to God. The best pizza you guys can can ever get. Alfie's in Washington, pretty good. It's pretty good. A little more crust than I'd like, but pretty damn good. Uh, but otherwise, Papa John's. Slim and Huskies, guys. Oh, go there. If you're traveling through, if you're going to Florida, go out of your way, go to Nashville, go to Slim and Huskies. You will not regret it. I promise you this. All right, I did find change, so. I was surprised, I didn't think there was gonna be any, but here we are. Oh, also, masks for COVID and things like that. Definitely uh, on the shadier side of things. I wouldn't be surprised if people use that to their advantage to obscure their identity. got a timer set easy enough I don't know what people did at laundromats before we had cell phones so I'm just gonna catch up on uh, comments and and uh, watch some videos and <laughs> I don't know what the heck you would do I guess you could read a book but there there's something about reading when I get into reading like I don't want to stop if I am interrupted there's too much noise something like that it bugs me to no end I don't, know. I don't read nearly as much as I probably should I, I watch more videos than anything but that's part of why uh, it's part of why we have a YouTube channel, right? Is to <laughs> share more videos for people to watch. <laughs> All right. So, 
I'm gonna go ahead and hang these guys up, and this was the vast majority of the load, and I put in a buck because I couldn't see how much a quarter would get me. So the total is up to $3.50 for this load of laundry, uh, and I probably put in too many quarters. So that's pretty good. I have uh, 20 minutes on the, on the deal. I don't think it's gonna take that long to dry. Basically just socks and my unmentionables. But we need to hang up some shirts and I pulled Emma's hoodie out of here as well. I really like this one. It's a uh, uh, South Dakota, Deadwood, South Dakota. Uh, it's it's kind of cool. Uh, really nice green color. And, um, and I don't want that to shrink. So keep that in good shape. The, uh, the only kind of awkward thing is you do have to open the slide in order to get into these closets. Here it's not a big deal, but sometimes obviously if you were on the side of the road and, and doing what we would typically do, that might be a big deal. Do you guys, I know some people have uh, little laundry, uh, laundry machines or, or washing machines and things like that. And I used to have a, a little washing machine and I just never used it because uh, we dwell wasn't the right setup for us. But uh, do you guys have your little washing machine or, or um, you know, how does that work for you? Or do you guys like the laundromat? Uh, sometimes we'll go to my mom's house, which is nice. She, she doesn't mind if we laundry there, which is great. Obviously this is going to, especially in the middle of the winter, this is going to introduce a lot more moisture. But if you're in the desert, it's not a, not a big deal at all. Out here, it, these clothes will dry in maybe six hours, if that. Now obviously the cotton materials take a little longer um, but cotton shrinks like crazy. Even the, the quick dry stuff shrinks uh, more than I would like. When we went out and uh, Emma rode in the helicopter and, and Brian gave us a, uh, a whole tour, uh, he actually uh, got these uh, Phoenix Firebird shirts for us. And that's a, that's a pretty badass logo, I gotta say. That's kind of fun. And I know a lot of people will like collect, especially if you go to Disney or something like that, like you collect t-shirts and all sorts of fun stuff. I'm more of a hat collector myself. What about you guys? I feel like I'm just ranting, like an old man just ranting to himself. <laughs> I should, I should work at a barber shop or something. I think I don't have enough hangers. Easy enough. It only took nine minutes on the dryer, and everything was pretty dang good. I like to leave things a little tiny bit damp, just so that they're not like crispy hot. And so we'll let these guys hang up and dry. And I think I'm gonna swing by Subway real quick and grab something to eat, but. Yeah, uh, what would have essentially been like three bucks if I knew what I was doing. Three bucks for a load of laundry is really not bad. Really not bad and pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Oh man, Subway. There's something about a sandwich that's not made by you that just tastes better. It's got the garlic urban cheese, you get all the, I think it's called the supreme meat. And I like to get lettuce, spinach, black olives, pickles, mustard. Mm. And I didn't used to be a veggie guy, but basically it's half salad. So, you know, <laughs> there's that. And we'll have steak and potatoes tomorrow, like the wild person I am. Uh, right now we are going to go to the Arizona Falls. I think it's called Arizona Falls. And Emma and I had ridden our uh, bikes out here when we were here last year with our electric XP bikes. And it was a pretty good trip. We were kind of hunting down all of the Frank Lloyd Wright uh, homes, all of his creations. But uh, there was no there was no water there last time. So I'm curious if there's gonna be any, any more water. I know the, there's a little bit of snow out in some of the mountains. I don't know if it's made its way down here. But it was kind of a cool little trip. So we'll see, we'll see what there is to see. Maybe it's nothing. But uh, I also, I know I've been doing a lot more lives lately, uh, live streams. And I did one yesterday, but I think I'm gonna do another one tonight. I'll post, uh, I'll, I'll post that out there. I don't know if you guys can see these posts very frequently. We don't get a lot of responses on the posts, uh, but I like chatting with you guys, and it's a lot of fun to kind of get to know you. I'm starting to like, of course, like recognize more usernames and things like that. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of cool. I'm not a big like, I'm not a big social creature, but I like the conversations. And um, I know like Blue Pony. Um, and even uh, even Brian 
every now and then. Uh, the, 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 the comments about like, oh, sorry for stupid questions. Questions are not stupid. They're not annoying. If I ever like, if I ever read something and I'm like, I make a face, it's usually that like, I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, sometimes, especially with some of Brian's comments, I don't know how to respond. But, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it may just be that I'm trying to trying to think of how to respond because well, even with a little bit of a uh, psychology training and and things like that you always kind of think like well people generally all think kind of the same right but every now and then you get you get folks that completely misinterpret your intentions or even if they got your intention right they they just respond completely opposite of how you would expect uh, so you know I'm, I'm trying to be a little more careful but hey uh, don't don't uh, don't let that stop you. Like if if I if I respond kind of funny, <laughs> trust me. I I, uh, I always appreciate folks that that they they tune into live streams. I'll comment and it's, it's just hey, it's just a chat, right? It's just uh, it's just a chat. I wish I could play this song, guys. <laughs> I don't want to get copyright flagged. But... Oh man, what a banger! What a banger! <laughs> Look at these beautiful mountains. We're kind of on the we're heading south. More on the north side of these uh, beautiful hills and mountains. Really cool. One thing that I really like about some of the architecture out here is you can see some of the houses in the hills, uh, but they don't immediately necessarily stand out. Some of them are just ridiculous, like this guy right here. Uh, and this is the town of Paradise Valley, which I believe is, uh, like that one's kind of cool, look at all the beautiful glass there. Uh, but I believe this is basically, you know, Phoenix but just for rich people. <laughs> so, uh, but these like houses, a lot of them are not too tall. You can even see over in those foothills. Um, they're not too tall, but they they kind of blend in a little bit more. They're not like uh, obnoxious or not bright white or anything like that. And, you know, any any other colors that, that would really stand out. Uh, I really like that. I think that's pretty cool. That's something that Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, one of the greatest architects ever, that's something he was really big on, is actually making sure that the house feels like it's a part of the environment. And it doesn't necessarily have to stick out. He was one way or the other, right? Either the house complemented the the area, it used the terrain, it used the, the features of the, the geography to, to really become a beautiful part of the nature. Or, you know, so, like he had a, a couple museums they very much stood out. Very, very interesting, unique designs. Uh, the man was very, very smart. Uh, but it is it is very interesting because if you ever look up, there's a lot of uh, documentaries about Frank Lloyd Wright. Very interesting uh, man. He had a lot of turmoil in his life. Uh, you know, being married a few times and very, uh, very unique characters. And there's, there's a mansion that doesn't necessarily blend in that well being kind of orange there. Uh, but... You know, I really like that. Really, look at these beautiful the hills out here. If you're bored and you want you want to learn a little something, um, I, I learned a lot watching a couple of good documentaries about Frank Lloyd Wright and, and, uh, and uh, kind of exploring why I, what's important to me about design, automotive design, home design, uh, tiny house design, things like that. I eat that stuff up. Kind of fun. truck out there uh, I don't hear any water at all so I'm pretty sure it's just kind of a dry falls right now um, which is fine that is what it is and the parking lot is actually pretty small here um, there's no parking for me that's for sure so um, it's kind of in a residential area it'd be kind of awkward to try to park on the side of the road anywhere over here it's, it's just laid out kind of strange so I'm gonna go ahead and end this video I need to go get the dog some food and then I'm gonna head back to where uh, I've been pretty comfortable parking and get ready uh, I'm gonna edit this video get ready for our live video uh, this evening definitely let me know though your guys' favorite pizza places like I'd love to know see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>